Northern Alberta, Canada, boreal forest covers vast expanses of the region's landscape. But in recent years, stretches of land have been cleared for development because below the ground surface, this area is rich with oil sands. Well, oil sands are, are an unconventional source of oil. They are, they are a very heavy oil, uh, and as such, they don't flow in the same way as a conventional oil would. Uh, there are two methods to, to getting this oil out of the ground. One is by surface mining. Um, that represents about half of the 1.6, 1.7 million barrels a day we get out of the ground. The other half is, is what we call in situ or in place, which is uh, accessed by using drilling, drilling methods. In the surface mining method, trucks weighing about a million pounds shovel 400 ton loads of oil sands to facilities where hot water separates the oil, also called bitumen, from the sand. But in areas where the oil sands lie deeper, steam is injected into wells drilled into the ground to melt the bitumen and suck it up to the surface. Really we're talking about a very large resource that is, has very high environmental impacts when it comes to uh, greenhouse gases, water impacts, uh, impacts to land, as well as uh, wildlife and water. So when you compare, say, for the greenhouse gas side of things, uh, oil sands are about 2.5 to 3.4 times more greenhouse gas intensive than conventional on a production basis. But when you're looking at the whole life cycle of emissions, so from getting bitumen out of the ground to burning it into your car or your truck, uh, we're looking at a, a significant uh, difference in, in percentage there, about 23% uh, more greenhouse gas intensive than, say, conventional oil. When you do impact the land, you have to figure out how to reclaim it. That's a law in Alberta. Of course, we hear a lot about greenhouse gas emissions in this day and age and uh, constrained carbon policies. So the onus is very much on the industry to figure out how to continue to reduce those carbon emissions. We've done a pretty good job. We've reduced our emissions by about 26% since 1990 per barrel. Uh, you compare that to the transportation sector, they've reduced theirs by about 11% per unit. So we are making progress. Look how much grew last year. So right now I'm in the middle of an area that used to be part of uh, one of St. Crude's original mine pits. And so it's about a thousand hectares of reclaimed land that includes some wetlands. We've proven that we can return it back to what it was before in about a third of the time it takes the natural forest, so that's about 20 years. Reclamation has not kept pace with the level of disturbance on the landscape today. We've only seen about one square kilometre of the uh, 700 or so square kilometres that's been disturbed, reclaimed and certified by the Alberta government. Wetlands make up about 40 to 60 percent of the region and are, are very challenging to actually reclaim and so I think we will see a significantly altered and different landscape post mining, post development than we saw before. I, I would recommend that you take a picture of the sheen, the multi-hued sheen of oil on the water there. The oil sands are why TransCanada wants to build the Keystone XL pipeline from Alberta to refineries in Texas. But the U.S. State Department hasn't approved the pipeline yet, mostly citing environmental concerns about the route, leaving the fate of the project uncertain. I think the only real question here is does the U.S. want Canadian oil or do they want their oil from someplace else? Because there isn't any other um, uh, question on the table here is will this cause U.S. consumption of oil to decline? No. Will it change the development of the Canadian oil sands? No. Um, all it will well, do is deny the U.S. access to a secure source of supply. Um, uh, GHG emissions will actually go up because tanker traffic actually creates more GHG emissions than you know, the production of, of the oil. So you've got tankers moving to China, tankers come in the Gulf Coast. Our studies would suggest way more greenhouse gas emissions. So you lose on the environment, you lose on the jobs, um, you lose on energy security. There's, there's no upside. Mm -hmm.